So, I was at my friend's place the other day, and he has these posters on his wall from a 500 year old book on mining called De Re Metallica. The posters fascinated me, and I started thinking about how cool it would be to build the machinery from them in Minecraft. I thought about it for a while, and decided that the best way to do this would be using Create Mod, which, for those who aren't familiar, is an amazing mod that lets you create all kinds of machines with moving parts. So in this video, I'm going to combine my fascination with history with that of making machines in Minecraft. So here we go. I decided to build this water-powered hoist, which looks like it was used to lift the ore out of the ground. There's a few challenges in this build. The first is that Create Mod doesn't actually have water wheels that are big enough, so we have to simulate one. And I'll explain how everything works as I'm building it. The next challenge is that it has to be functional while maintaining more or less the original look. The goal isn't to be entirely practical or entirely aesthetic, but to do both as well as possible. I'll start by building the water wheel. It's going to be 13 blocks tall and 4 blocks wide. It needs to have slats going in opposite ways because it needs to turn in two different directions to control if the hoist is going up or down. This part is just aesthetic, and if I were to make a purely functional version, it would look something like this, and I'd have a gear shift to control the direction of the output shaft instead of two different water wheels. Once the wheel is done, I'll build the functional hoist part. This is actually going to occupy the same space as the main shaft, but thanks to how moving parts, or contraptions as they're called in Create Mod work, it's going to be okay. In order for the main shaft to remain in contraption when it stops, I have to set the movement mode to only place when anchor is broken, the anchor in this case being the mechanical bearing. I can do this by looking at the bearing and scrolling the mouse wheel while holding a wrench. I'll put the functional hoist parts on a mechanical bearing so I can move it out of the way in case I need to change something on the main shaft, since I can't add or remove blocks from it when it's in contraption mode. The main hoist uses a rope and pulley block and is powered by shafts that will eventually be connected to actual functional water wheels. For this next part, I'm making the shaft and a vertical support. I'll use some stairs to cover where the pulley is going since it'll show otherwise. I had initially planned on using trap doors for this part, but they weren't thick enough to fully cover the pulley. Now what I'm doing is making the little shack where the operator can control the pulley from. I'll add a ladder even though there isn't one in the drawing, because whoever is operating this is going to need a way to get in and out. I need to make a bit of redstone logic for the water wheel. The basic idea is that I need the water to flow over the water wheel only one way at a time because if it flows in both directions, it could break some of the components. The requirement for this redstone logic is that water needs to flow either way when only one or the other lever is activated. The circuitry that you see here is controlled by the two levers in the control shack, and the signal is sent by wireless redstone, which is a feature of Create Mod. The redstone needs to control some physical components, so I'm adding them here. We'll have two water wheels with a piston above each one that controls the flow of the water. Create does have its own pistons, but those require rotational force, so we'll use the basic pistons from Vanilla Minecraft. Also, keep in mind that using two water wheels isn't the optimal way to control this build, but I thought it was keeping with the spirit of things to do it this way. I'll add the wireless redstone receivers, and now we're good to test this out. Now we'll try out the controls and we'll look at what's happening with the redstone. The water wheel should turn when only one lever is active. When neither or both are active, the water wheel should stop. When you see that the redstone output is on, that means that it's blocking the water from flowing on one particular side. So when the signal is off, that means that water is flowing. Alright, looks like it works. Now we have to take care of the functional part of this build. To do that, we need to pass the shaft all the way around so that it can reach the rope and pulley. Alright, now I just have to get the shaft through this horizontal passageway, and then up through a vertical one. Once that's done, we can test out the rope and pulley. Let's watch the rope and pulley in action and compare that to the mechanical side of things. We can see how the pistons are tracked to allow the water to flow onto the water wheels. Now that this works, the next step is to add water to the outside part to make the large water wheel look functional. I'll start by building out the dimensions using planks, and then I'll cut away the parts where the water will be. I'll also add the pistons that will control how the water flows so it matches the direction that the water wheel is turning. I placed some trapdoors to act as the bottom of the top part, but I noticed the water wasn't flowing. The reason being that they were slightly too high, and even though they were being waterlogged, they wouldn't let the water flow. There's Minecraft physics for you. I had to remove them and place them slightly lower. To do this, I placed some more planks and attached them to the bottom. Now I'm making a trough for the water to flow through, as though we are being fed by a spring within the mountain. I also added some decoration here to make it look like they built into the mountain to get the water inside. This part is a walkway that connects the mountain to the control shack. I'm building it similar to the water trough but with a slab floor instead of trap doors. I'll add the redstone receivers to these pistons up here. Once that's done, the technical part of this build will be complete. Now I just have to hide the redstone receivers and test it out to make sure it works. You might have noticed that the water looks like it's falling through the water wheel. That's because it's in assembled contraptions and fluids are able to go through those. I'll sneak in a few trap doors down here to make the water look like it's flowing over the water wheel instead of through it. I'll do the same thing to the other side. Now that everything is working, I still need to carve a path for the water to drain. I'll start with a small cobblestone channel leading towards the natural slope of the hill. I'll let it flow until it stops and then carve out a little bit of dirt to help it onwards towards the lake. 
I figured that the water here might help some plants grow, so I planted a dark oak tree, but I didn't like how it turned out, so I destroyed it and tried again. The second time, it came out much nicer. I then added some final touches by laying down some grass and flowers. I decided to shift my attention back to the hoist. I added some leaves on one of the supports to simulate vines twisting around it. I then started to work on the stone opening of the mine shaft when I realized that the handle from the mechanical bearing was in the way. I placed the handle on the other side and then continued to build the rest of the opening. As I continued to work on the mine shaft, I started digging down. It then occurred to me that I could use the hoist to drill the hole for me. Even though this isn't what I originally intended the hoist to be used for, I figured it would be a fun way to put it to use. I added some mechanical drills, glued everything together, and started lowering the hoist. I stopped it soon after because I wanted to add some chests. This allows the contraption to collect everything that it drills, and it lets me see how much stuff I can get for drilling a hole like this. Spoiler alert, it isn't that much. Anyway, here's what a hoist lowering drills into the ground looks like. Once the hole was dug, I didn't need the drills anymore, so I removed them and started working on the platform. The idea is that workers in the mine load the platform with ore and then a minecart can come and collect the goods. If you wanted to, you could connect an iron generator to this and have the hoist bring it up at regular intervals. I wasn't sure how I wanted the base of the platform to look, so I tried a few different ways. I finally settled on using some upside down stairs and I did something similar for the roof. As I was building this, it suddenly occurred to me that I didn't know if I could move minecart rails without breaking them. I did a quick test and luckily it turns out that you can move rails with Create Mod. Now I needed to set up a powered rail and a button so that I could launch the minecart once it was full. Launching in 3, 2, 1. Once the platform was done, I started making a bridge for the minecart rails. I decided it was a good time to build the trail going to the stairs that I added earlier off camera. I finished the straightaway part of the bridge and now it was time to add the rails. Then what I did was add a curve to finish the portion that was going into the mountain. Now there's only one thing left to do, and that's to launch a minecart along this track. Alright, here we go. I really think this build fits the theme of Minecraft, which is, after all, a game about mining. I really wish we had more than just pickaxes and minecarts in the base game though. Luckily, we have Create Mod, which adds so much more to the game. If you enjoyed watching me build this mining hoist from 500 years ago, then please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it, and it helps out the channel. It took me a long time to make this video, over a month actually, and I just wanted to thank you all for your patience. In that time, I learned how to use Replay Mod, which allows me to better show what I'm talking about. It also lets me focus on doing whatever it is I'm doing in-game, rather than also thinking about how the shot is going to look at the same time. I also used Fabric Mods for the first time in making this video, since Replay Mod is now exclusive to Fabric. Up until this point, I had only ever used Forge since all the big mods that I wanted to use were only available on that platform, but now many of them are available on both. I hope that everything that I've learned recently will allow me to make even better videos in the future. Thank you for watching.